Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I'm going to show you how we built wooden steps for our farmhouse front porch. Our farmhouse needs a curb appeal makeover for sure. We have been busy renovating the inside of this place and we've done some porch makeovers, but nothing very substantial with the landscaping and making the porch the dreamy farmhouse front porch that I've wanted it to be. So we have some big plans in the works. And the first project I wanna share with you is how we built these wooden steps. We started with a concrete block. It was functional, it was great, but it did not have the curb appeal and it definitely wasn't the best for any elderly people or kids, it was too high and not the best entrance to our farmhouse. It also didn't span the width that I wanted it to between the two Victorian posts to really make the entrance beautiful like I wanted it to be. I dreamt of putting pumpkins and flowers on some beautiful wooden steps and so we needed to get rid of it. So the first step we did was jackhammer out the concrete step. After jackhammering out the concrete step, we filled the area back in with gravel. Luke wanted to do that because he said that it would be better for the steps to sit on something like gravel rather than dirt. Now, before you think, well, why didn't you just leave some of the concrete? It was not quite at the level we wanted it, so the rest of the ground leading to it was a little bit higher. We wanted it to level out. We also didn't know how we could exactly cut the concrete to be exactly the size of the steps that we wanted. And we were afraid it would stick out a little bit, then we'd have to go in and jackhammer around the wood, and then we'd have to anchor the handrail post down in the concrete. It just made a whole lot more sense to jackhammer that out, all of the concrete sidewalk and everything to put on our new pavers and new steps than to leave any of it. Now in our last house, we didn't actually take the concrete steps out, we just covered them with wood. So I have a blog post that is very popular on that subject over on farmhouseonboon.com, so I will link it below because that is a wonderful option. If you can just not jackhammer them out and cover them with wood, it is much better. But in this case, the problem was that the step was too tall, so it didn't have the shape that we wanted. So just going around it wasn't going to be an option. Now, Luke and I are not carpenters. Everything that we've done around this homestead, all the projects that we've built and done, we just learn as we go, we watch YouTube, we read blog posts and just figure it out along the way. And so if we can do this, you definitely can do this. I used to would have thought we had to hire a carpenter to do something like this, but now I know that we can totally do it. Now that's not to say that a few parts of it weren't really challenging. I wrote down all of the supplies I purchased for this project. For the treads, I brought three 10 foot one by sixes. I decided to make the steps exactly five feet wide so that we could cut everything 10 foot directly in half and I wouldn't have any scraps. Now before I get any further, I do want to point out that there will be this entire tutorial and the supply list with a printable option over on the blog. So if you want to make five foot wide steps, actually, any size steps, you're just gonna have to increase the amount of supplies, but I will have all the supplies that I use and then you can increase or decrease depending on how wide your steps are, how tall they are, and your situation. But it will be there and I will link it in the description box below. All right, the next thing I bought was one 12 foot two by 12. Now, I would have preferred to have bought one a little bit shorter because we only needed to make three stringers and we could have made four with this size of board, but they did not actually sell a 10 foot in the two x 12, so I this was the best option I could buy. For the risers, I bought three one by sixes in the six foot length. With all of this, we bought treated lumber that was rated for exterior. Even though we we're gonna paint it, we want this to last a really long time. For the posts to attach the handrail to, I bought two eight foot four by fours posts, and then I bought several eight foot two by twos for the spindles. For the siding to cover the sides of the steps so that the stringers wouldn't be showing, I bought one sheet, so it was a four foot by eight foot sheet of the plywood siding panel. 
by Platanium. We bought the one with the four inch centers as opposed to the skinny beadboard like we have here in our kitchen. It is rated for exterior as long as you paint it, which we fully plan to paint the steps. We also purchased one eight foot two by six board to be the anchor board that we attach to the concrete porch to attach everything else to. We used lots of three inch wood deck screws. We also used Tapcon concrete screws and anchors for attaching the anchor board to the concrete. The last supply we needed was about four or five two by fours to create the top and bottom of the handrail. The first step for this project was to attach an anchor board to the concrete for all of the steps to attach to. So even though we did rip out the concrete step, we still had and have a concrete porch. In order to attach wooden steps to the concrete porch, we needed something wood to attach it to. We just used a two by six cut to six inches shorter than the width of the steps. This would allow us to attach the stringers later and extend the treads beyond it. So we wanted five foot wide steps. So we cut a two by six to four and a half feet and attached it to the concrete with masonry screws and the proper accompanying masonry drill bit. This was actually way easier than we expected. We thought this would be the hardest part of the project because for some reason we thought drilling into concrete was really difficult. It actually was really easy and it was extremely secure. We ended up going with the four inch masonry screws and just after two, it felt so secure that I could probably have jumped up and down on it. It grabbed really well and we felt very secure attaching the rest of the project to it. The second step for this project was to cut out and build the stair stringers. This was the most challenging part. Everything after this went really smooth. Now you can find so many tutorials online for how to draw stair stringers. I will link the ones that I found the most helpful in the description box below. But my biggest recommendation is to make a template out of plywood or cardboard or paper or all three if you're like me because I had to draw this so many times to finally get it right before you cut into an expensive two by 12. I found out that it was really important to use the right tool. So all of the tutorials tell you to use a framing square and I thought I could just get by with the things that we had. No, you have to get that framing square. If you have to make a special trip to town, it's 10 bucks, get it. As soon as I started using that, it was always square and nice. I just had to get the perfect measurements down, which ended up not being that hard. After cutting the stringers out from the two by 12, which we did after getting the template perfect, which took forever, but it was smooth sailing after that, we attached the stringers to the anchor board. Now we did the two outside ones attached to the outside of the anchor board. So whenever we cut that anchor board at four foot six inches, I was accounting for the two inch width of the stringers attaching to the outside. We just used some deck screws to attach that. And then we also used some little brackets in the corner. And that was just for added security. Now for the third stringer, we attached that in the middle of the two outside ones. And so we cut the length of the anchor board off the back of it so that it would come out at the same length. So we just cut it the exact same from the template and then just shaved a little bit off of the back to make it come out at the same as the other two. After placing the stringers, the next step was to attach the riser boards, which were the one by six. We cut them to the width of the stringers, which at this point was about four foot 10 inches because we had the four foot six anchor board, two inches on either side for the added width of the stringers. And so we just did the risers across the front for that length. After that, we cut out the treads. So since we made even five foot steps, even with the five foot, we just cut the one by six by 10 foot boards directly in half, yielding to us six lovely treads. We placed the top two and screwed those in place and left the bottom two off so that we could dig and place the handrail posts because we wanted those to be just inside the width of the steps. The steps are gonna come a little bit beyond the handrail. So Luke dug the post 
holes, got them I think to about 20 inches deep, placed the four by four posts and then set them with concrete and allowed them to dry so we didn't work on the project again for a day or so. This made them really secure and nice but I did tell Luke if we don't cut these right, we have to literally rip this all out and jackhammer it. So thankfully, I'm gonna get to the end of the story real quick. We were able to, and we were able to cut them off right and not ruin our project. After placing the four x four posts, we placed the back tread on the bottom step, and then we cut the front tread that would have to go around the post. To do this, Luke just held the tread up to the post and kind of traced around the measurements of where the post would be, notched it out, fit it in, and then screwed it in place with more deck screws. Next was building the handrail. This was the scary part where if we didn't cut that post just right, we would have had to jackhammer out the concrete that it was sitting in it would have been bad, so we were very careful. The first thing we did to build the handrail was attach the top two by four. Now for this, we placed it just one two by four length below where the current two by four railing already is on our porch because we wanted there to be a diagonal board going down for the handrail and then we wanted to sit a two by four on top of it to kind of finish it off. So we needed to start this board that would go under that one, one two by four length below it. Hopefully this all makes sense by watching the video. Now ordinarily, you cut the handrail angle at 30 degrees, that's just the standard. We cut the two by four at 30 degrees, placed it up against our porch and realized that because of the short height of the railings in our Victorian porch, because nothing is standard in an old house, that it made the handrail so short that even a kid wouldn't be able to reach down to it. So for to make it functioning at all, we decided to go with 15 degree angles. So Luke used his miter saw and cut a 15 degree angle. We cut it, we placed it, saw where it would hit the post, traced the mark, and then Luke did something that totally scared me. He cut it with a chainsaw. He assured me that this was the best way to do it and he actually did an amazing job. It's a clean cut. It looks really great. And then we did the top board that would sit on top of that. So we cut the top one at a 15 degree beveled angle, laid it on top, and we placed that top board. To complete the bottom of the handrail, we cut a two by four at 15 degrees measured from top to bottom, just like we did to make everything square, cut the bottom at 15 degrees and placed it. And then we finish it off with the spindles in between, which I measured every five inches. That would be where spindles would go. We just mimicked everything that was already going on on the porch. So we already had two by twos. They were already about five inches apart. And so we mimicked that down on the handrail. We cut each one at a beveled 15 degree at the top and the bottom, placed it in between and screwed it in. Now, if everything is square and even, you can make one of those and then just cut out several, use it as your template. We pretty much could do that, but there were a few times where it needed to be a little shorter, a little longer. We just worked with it and <laughs> did what we could. We repeated that exact same process over on the other side for the other handrail. The final step was covering the side of the steps with the siding. Now Luke actually did this while I was going to get milk at Milk Pickup with all the kids, and so I didn't get any footage of it, but it's really straightforward. He just measured the side of the steps where the stringers are, he measured from top of the step to the bottom of the step, and each step in between, cut it, and then screwed it up there. He made one template and then repeated it on the other side, and the project was done. Now the steps are all done. The only thing that we have to do is paint them. We would love, I would love it if we could stain the top steps and keep the nice wood look, but in order to make the concrete look beautiful and we are working with the concrete, I'm not gonna rip it out, so we have to make the concrete work. I am going to paint the concrete with an anti-slip concrete coating and I'm going to paint the top of each step the same as that. So as if whatever is happening on the porch is just carrying out onto the steps seamlessly, that's my plan. So the tops of the steps will be the same gray that the concrete will be, and then I'll paint all of the risers white and the handrail white to match 
the handrails on the front porch. I am so excited to finish this project. I'm going to be taking you along on the entire rest of our curb appeal makeover. We have landscaping to do. We have someone coming to lay flagstone pathways. We are getting new woodworking around the top that will match the Victorian charm on our side porch. So, so many things I'm gonna be bringing you along and hopefully in a month or so, I will be revealing the entire makeover to you. I hope that you enjoyed this project and that if you are looking to build steps, whether it be to a deck or a barn, I don't even know. I can think of now that I know how to build steps after struggling through 15 stringer templates, I want to rebuild the steps on the side of our house, which are looking pretty rough and in shambles. I want to build new steps going up to the side porch, which also are looking a little bit rough. We have a step area down into our barn that is just basically like a old rock that we could build. And so lots of ideas, lots of reasons to spruce things up with a simple project like this. So I hope that you enjoyed following along and you can recreate this project somewhere in your home or your property. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.